<laughs> Mama Strick is winning the morning and winning the day. She's off. Party, party, <laughs> Have a great one. Oh, we'll see you at the next camp. How good is that? How long will it take? A few hours? Between five to eight hours anyway. He's going back. Yeah. Perfect conditions. And there we go, the tide has finally reached the fire. Right on schedule. It's a good idea making a fire just below the high tide mark. So in the morning, nature does the work for you. Oh, this island is incredible. High tide now. I'm gonna have a quick swim while the water's so clean. This spot is incredible. There's so much, so much fish. Coral trout, tuskies, Woo! paradise. All right, we've done a quick pack up this morning. Left the beach exactly as we found it, minus a fair bit of plastic we picked up. And good news, the water is crystal clear, which is super rare for this kind of area, and we're now uh, continuing our journey in search of another island. Mum got off early this morning. She's a little bit slower than us. Dad in the original Salty Dingo is just setting off as well. It's going to be a good day. We um, could be on for a bit of fishing or spear fishing, so we'll just see how it plays out. Hang on, cowboy <laughs> and cowgirl. You excited, Brad? Go for it. Big high tide. Wow. How clean is this water? Cleaner than a pool. Yeah. Be a drain or a little looks like there's a little mangrove system that goes up there. Have a quick look? Yeah, it'd be worth having a look. We're just cruising along the coastline from north to south here and there's so many little tucked in protected bays, such as this one that would make for an ideal camping spot. Look at that. Jump off. Yeah. <laughs> so, so graceful. Has this little mangrove crock hole. That is 100% the crock hole. If you were a croc living here, you'd be straight up there. For sure. Mangroves, clean, protected. What are you looking at? Oh, look at all! <laughs> Couple of jacks here. There's this little crystal clear freshwater creek that runs out. And it's generally a great spot for mullet to get your bait or for crocodiles or for mangrove jack. So see what we can find. A couple of fish darting around in there. So the whole way down where we're going today, there's a lot of these little white sandy beaches um, and we haven't actually been here before. So the whole plan is pull in, have a little look around, see if there's anything cool and then move to the next one. But on the way down, 
there's a, a likely that we can spot to do a bit of spear fishing. So we're gonna, as and I, throw a wetsuit on and um, jump in and see if we can't find some lunch. Clean. Oh, good find, eh? Where was it up pretty high? Yeah. Must have come in with the sack one. Nice. trout in this beautiful black spot tusk fish put him straight to sleep right up in the shallows one of the best eating fish another beautiful fish bar cheek coral trout about two and a half three kilos worth beautiful campfire size Crocs around here, eh, mate? Yeah, no crocs whatsoever. Well, <laughs> look, there is, but at least we'd see them coming. Yeah, nice big <laughs> See them coming from at least 50 metres away. We've jumped in the water, we've got a bit of lunch, we've got some beautiful fish, but we've come onto this really long stretch of beach, which is open to the prevailing wind, the southeasterly, and we're gonna have a little bit of a beach comb. See what's washed up. We're on a treasure hunt. We're on the great treasure hunt. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> right. Oh, this is mind-blowingly beautiful. There's that coconut palm tree just sticking out loud and proud. An incredible. 
incredibly spectacular vista in the background. Wow. What the heck? Big black plastic snake. So much piping. Where have you come from? I've been finding a lot of weathered Nautilus shells all over this beach. Just having a walk along the beach here and there's a big metal sphere which is washed up in the surge line. Now tell me that doesn't look like something from the war. A big bomb. Oh. It's about a meter, just over a meter, meter and a half high. Perfect circle. Well, that's strange. I'm definitely not game to kick that or touch it. Oh, onwards. That big metal sphere is actually pretty strange. I can't really work out what it would be. I'm interested on sending that little bit of footage to some form of an expert in the matter and seeing if they can identify what it is. If anyone knows what it is, please put it in the comments or has an idea of what it is. It looks pretty suspect to me. I've been walking along this beach, seeing if there's any cool shells. And there's unfortunately, like so many of these remote beaches, so much plastic, 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 rubber, plastic, bottles, shoes, light bulbs, tires. Look all up there, rubbish, there's ropes, there's bits of nets. It really is devastating to see and as always a reminder that we just got to be so mindful about the plastics that we use and what we consume and just minimizing waste as much as possible look at this oh. Oh. single use and low use plastics just shouldn't be a thing you know so really try and limit the amount of plastic you use so we can limit the amount of plastic that's ending up on these beautiful beaches. Oh, there's a lure. And another lure. And you're kidding, three in one. Four, no way! What? Someone lose a tackle box. <laughs> well, that's the jackpot right there. Just taking a bit of shade under the coconuts and far out there is some serious serious rubbish on this beach <laughs> get a load of this someone's done themselves a bit of a mischief <sighs> anyone's missing a, missing a fishing rod and reel we found it it's uh seen better days I am 100% coming back here with a fleet of vessels and a lot more hands because this I've honestly just walked about 200 meters of this huge long expansive beach and there's about a 10 15 meter spread here with just rubbish 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 the whole way down so I'm definitely going to come back here in the upcoming uh, months when I organise a bit of a crew. I've dropped the guys on the beach as is just finishing up his beach comb, but check out these islands. It's like a postcard of Australia. How's that? Palm trees in the background, white sandy beach, rolling mountains, clear water. We are so, so lucky to be able to come out and do this. And look, 
We had a 20 kilometer beach and not another single person on it. What'd you find, mate? I found half a dozen lures, fishing lures, and I found a tub that's in really good condition. Oh, that nice. I thought would be good for the boat. Practical. But, mate, the rubbish on the beach. It's pretty bad. Is, is as bad as I've seen it. Really? Yeah, it's so thick with rubbish. Plastics, rubber, uh, flippers, bottles, glass. Metal, rope, nets, really? like microplastics, large plastics, pellets. Yeah. Just so much rubbish. We definitely need to come back here with the crew. And do a big clean up. The fleet and do a serious clean up. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was a bit of a harsh reminder to like the remote places. Oh, that aren't getting any beach clean up. Looks good from afar, but you can't see the plastics until you get up close and personal, eh? running out there so we're gonna have a better look another bay to check out and this one's got to be up there with like one of the most scenic bays or spots in North Queensland absolutely incredible the mountain range here looks like something out of Jurassic Park or where the Incas live in Peru like a Machu Picchu kind of setup up there palm trees on the beach and there's a little creek that runs out here um, so we're going to have a look, see if there's any fish or crabs or anything living up there. I feel like we're in Tahiti or something like that. Behind us here is these huge volcanic cliffs and palm trees on a white sandy beach. We don't normally have like backdrops like this in North Queensland. We're just fueling up, we used a fair bit of fuel today running around and we've got some big plans tomorrow. So fueling the boat up and getting all set. Good morning from a pretty special spot. So we camped there under the palm trees last night, mum, dad, Fran and Az. Um, this morning we're breaking camp. Um, we're heading on down this way. We're looking for a shipwreck that hopefully has got a lot of big fish on it. So we're gonna jump in for a spear fish and hopefully spear something like a finger mark or a coral trout or a big tusky. And then head up to one of the most specky waterfalls in North Queensland. So. This is going to be a really epic day, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Yeah, we're getting it all in there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> getting... <laughs> Hang on! <laughs> How you going there, Skip? Oh, it's a bit bloody choppy this morning. <laughs> a little bit bumpier than anticipated. Brandy holding fast back there. Yeah. Holding steady. Trust it. Do it well, mate. A little bit lumpier than expected, but we're getting there. So, oh. so we've come out about half an hour ride straight into the swell and into the wind and the chop this morning in the middle of the shipping channel and it may not look like it it's difficult to get an appreciation for it but the swell's quite steep and sharp and we've persevered and punched straight into it and we've come out to where uh, in the early 90s a prawn trawler went down so there's meant to be a wreck here in around 25 meters of water so we've dropped a, a drop line on it so we can try and keep a bearing of where it is because the current's quite strong but we're going to jump in, have a look, see how the visibility is. Hopefully it's decent and check out what's on it. Could be a nice fish to be able to take home for dinner.
My huge school of finger mark. Yeah. And I just I just missed him. <laughs> missed, missed him. Missed him. Oh, big one, eh? Really? Yeah. Oh, at least you missed him. Did you hit it or? No, he just was looking right at me. And I was like, turn, and then he turned, and then he gam and turned that way, and I just missed. So I stepped out for a little while to spill on the The golden snapper, these guys are just such a cool fish to hunt. Uh, we've been chasing them all around the island or looking for them um, unsuccessfully, haven't been able to find them. So we went offshore to a deeper wreck. Uh, pretty challenging diving in the murky water, but we managed to find a school of them and um, take this beautiful one home. These guys are one of my favorite eating fish. So this little beach and bay, we have decided out of all the little spots we've tucked into and explored today, that we'll call home for the night. So throw on the swags and the tents up on the beach, drag the red dragon up, anchor the boats out the front. We're going to grab a couple of coral trout out of the esky that we got today and set up a really good camp, get a little fire going, have some dinner and another fantastic day exploring and another hopefully beautiful night under the stars oh coconut when you're in the tropics one thing you really need to keep in mind when you are camping under coconut palm trees is don't don't camp under coconut palm trees because 
those big juicy nuts up there as much as they're fantastic when they hit the ground or you grab them and you can drink them they call them the silent killer more people every year die from coconuts falling on the heads than shark attacks so uh, keep in mind when you are setting up a camp just <laughs> don't put it under them heading into base camp with the essentials a couple of beautiful coral trout which will feed us a couple of white marlins to wash them down <laughs> How you going? Can you touch? Dinner and dessert. <laughs> And this is home for the night. Yeah, and this is one of the spots we've never been to. You know, all these islands around here, we very much enjoy coming and checking them out, but I'm so excited to spend a night here because it's absolutely awesome. But yeah, haven't, spent, haven't been here. It's only maybe two hours from home, mate. Yeah, it honestly blows my mind that we've lived here our whole lives and we've never been to quite a lot of the spots that we've been to today. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, just a, a firm reminder to ourselves that yeah. you need to keep uh, exploring your own backyard because there's often, yeah, within a few hours from where you live, mm. there's just so much to explore. Like, look straight out the front of the, the beach yeah. here, we got a couple of coral trout, they're dinner tonight. That's dinner. Uh, how do you reckon we do them? Mate, I reckon these ones straight on a hot fire. Yep. Yeah, and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Simple seafood that's yet again it, in the Back to Basics kitchen. Back to Basics. Uh, nothing better. Uh, so our challenge to you, yeah. though, if you're watching this, could just about guarantee that within yeah. two to four hours of where you live, you've got somewhere where you can go and get Back to Basics that you haven't been to yet. Uh, so grab the camping gear, yeah. all right, pack the bags, pack the car, pack the boat, and get out there yourself. Sweet, for us mate, let's get this fire going. Alright. Alright. A little bit of trouty to it. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I was meant to go on the plate, didn't I? <laughs> 